It's August 25th, 2020. It is uh, 3.30 p.m. Uh, today would be the uh, three-year anniversary of uh, three years and a month on an anniversary connected to a filing that I submitted as part of a writ of habeas corpus that I put before the Supreme Court of Texas originally and then uh, in one form and then submitted before the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals uh, as uh, an effort to try to get re legal redress uh, through the criminal court system. And specific to this was discussions and an outline of my efforts to discuss uh, what I identified as a business plan. Uh, first, uh, with the women at a domestic violence shelter I was at, then at an organization, um, and then following being kidnapped um, and being able to get released, I uh, presented it again to that organization, but to an affiliate in a different area. And they had to go through that, and at some point it was uh, referred or given uh, exposure to a organization in the city of Houston called the, uh, well, at the time, identified formally as the Houston Office of Business Opportunity. I do believe now it is the city of Houston Office of Business Opportunity. Uh, the, the actual uh, acronym it uses can vary depending upon the context, but at the time it was identified to me and um, formally introduced and associated with the concept of Houston Office of Business Opportunity. And I was concerned because I was homeless at the time and it was called a hobo. And I kept dinging or getting attracted to stories specifically uh, regarding homeless people and our discussions about the trains, right? It's different when you're in an urban environment and you're talking about being homeless and having to deal with transportation, uh, specifically involving the train system that's within a municipality. It's a little bit different when you think about what the historical legacy of the train networks in the country are and what it meant to be a hobo politically, which is different and distinct than being a homeless person that's uh, being used or that is trying to deal with getting out of homelessness. But those nuances were only uh, in one manner uh, connected. This uh, business plan was actually a plan for how to organize around asset recovery. And one of the things it mentioned is that, lo and behold, I'm going here. I was one of those homeless people that was very interested in space-based le legislation. And I was one of those people that believed that I had the skills and capabilities and was pursuing uh, technical training in order to be able to provide services or participate in activities that might be connected to space uh, exploration or matters related to space, up to and including the telecommunications system, uh, cybersecurity, uh, or anything having to do with the digital media that uses uh, space-based technologies as some sort of relay uh, or some sort of information dissemination network. I also come from a family whose career and livelihood was on dealing with the internet technology infrastructure development and implementation and uh, specifically uh, having to navigate and deal with things that were distinct, distinct between what was appropriate for military use and what was appropriate for civilian use. Hence my interest in space, especially as an American, right? I mean, one of the core matters when it comes to anything having to do with space is where, in, in what manner, if it is deemed to be acceptable, are there to be distinctions between military usage of space and civilian access and usage of space. This is actually the core of most of the international treaties that have been arranged or signed regarding space and is also at the core of what constituted the Cold War. Um, was who had access to space and what did we do when we had access to space. So I was, lo and behold, um, trying to deal with this. And at some point I had to submit a motion in connection with my writ of habeas corpus because of matters that were going on at the time. One of the things I mentioned was my concerns that changes that the city council had engaged regarding the flood mitigation plan for Houston in July of 2017 were illegal and were perhaps connected to an abuse of various kinds of technologies, including space-based technologies, that could contribute to processes of sexual exploitation. And this is right there in the motion. This is right there in the motion, my, this, you know, my understanding of a legacy of ex, uh, investigation 
regarding the potential of exploitation, including sexual exploitation that comes um, with the various uh, manners in which people's movements are uh, obstructed and or interfered with and how resource acquisition uh, can be used to try to lure or entice people into cooperating with illicit activity up to and including prostitution and up to and including sexual extortion. So this uh, is, is something that is, is still a part of the paradigm that I'm trying to address and I really believe that there's a couple of things that have happened. Not only have some of my concerns been substantiated and not only has there been an exacerbation and expansion of the very concerns I had that have been allowed to unfold since then, but I now also realize that there were efforts in other parts of the country while um, I was doing, uh, I was not overtly involved in investigating or organizing within communities that had the kind of cognizability that they did. That there were efforts in Texas uh, and other states of the country to address from a perspective related to energy policy, um, including the changes to the meter system, as well as the changes to the rollout of 4G. Issues very much connected to how technology can be used for processes of exploitation, um, including uh, impacting the biophysiology. And if there was not a explicit discussion or concern expressed regarding the means by which it was engaged in acts of electronic sexual exploitation or in other processes that attempted to create the conditions for other kinds of sexual exploitation, I do not consider what I have learned about those past efforts to be discontinuous from the investigations that have been going on for 10, maybe even 20 years uh, connected to sex trafficking and sexual exploitation. Part of this is that there have been different political perspectives at certain times. There are people who have wanted to normalize certain elements of the sex trade uh, in addition to being connected to international policy. But then there are also people and understand prostitution is illegal and pimping people is illegal and being a John is illegal and engaging in uh, child pornography and consumption and creation of child pornography is illegal. Those are crimes. And so discussion of concepts of sexual bioenergy and or the uh, commercialization of sexuality cannot avoid the fact that those are crimes and it cannot avoid the fact that it is a crime to traffic people for the purposes of sexual or labor exploitation. This is a federal crime, and so far as I know, um, all the states I've been in and have been trafficked through have state laws and other things connected to prohibitions on trafficking for the purposes of sexual or labor exploitation. So, you know, this is part of what's going on right now, and it's also part of why a lot that has been going on and has been obscured is so important to acknowledge at the times um, as they become appropriate for consideration and reflection. You know, as we're, we're dealing with what's going on right now, we also have to take into consideration the fact that there's a variety of factors that are being recapitulated. Uh, and part of that is also including our relationship with space and space-based technologies. So it's one of these matters in which, you know, the situation with COVID-19 is either intentionally or perhaps even coercively challenging us to step outside of our predetermined or predefined uh, understandings of what constitutes identity. Uh, but it's also very important that we be very conscientious about what the structural and other um, uh, protections are that we have when we understand that we are engaging on a multi-dimensional level and that also includes engaging with technologies that are in space and perhaps even dealing with consciousness that is outside of the actual uh, magnetosphere of the earth itself. So um, I just am bringing this up because this is uh, some of the things that are going on in the context of what is otherwise happening um, and it's important to address it from that perspective. As I said, uh, within the last uh, 48 to 72 hours, I expressed a concern that there were uh, about to be printed um, or published formally um, elements of the Federal Reserve that I consider to be very hazardous. Part of what this was was in connection with changes to FEMA policy related to floodplain insurance. That is not about the actual specific communities of concern being in any sort of default related to payments on floodplain insurance. 
It is a complete manipulation and machination and derivation of what's really happening with those communities around the floodplain insurance program for a purpose that has not been revealed. And despite who or whatever else thought that they were entitled to do that, I believe it and still contend that it is a threat. And as things are going, the evidence continues to substantiate that claim. But in the meantime, it's also important to know that you know, all of us were, are, were and are people that have the capacity to uh, contribute in a number of very meaningful ways. And while at a certain point I might have expressed my intentions to engage from a perspective of having a business plan, you know, there's a plenty of precedent for understanding that there's all kinds of different social institutions we could have to move forward. And so hopefully now is a time where we can uh, take uh, faith in and or take uh, be affirmed in what it is that we have to offer while we're also dealing with this transition I anticipate that coming up in the next couple of months hopefully very soon there's going to be some very very significant paradigm shift that a lot of what was previously allowed to be characterized as too big to fail is now uh, too culpable to not be taken down so I'm encouraging anybody who has been able to persist in um, making sure that they do what they can uh, to protect themselves and their communities. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing this through with you.